Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to do a little more than just a review. We're going to test ride this Powerfly FS9. Now we have done a previous video going over all the features, but this one we're actually going to be able to get out and ride. So this will ride very similar to many of the Powerfly range. The fit and feel of it is very similar between the models, but this one has a few fancier features, including a dropper post and a fancier console system, which can be controlled via your phone. It comes with the XT drivetrain and XT brakes. So this stops and shifts fantastically. And overall, the options on it are quite high end. This would be in that $7,000 mountain bike range, ignoring the fact that it has an electric system on it as well. We're going to go ahead and go for a bit of a cruise along pike paths, a bit of gravel, and a mix of off-road trails. And this is literally some mountain bike trails. I want to push this to see as far as it can go how capable it is off-road. For anyone new here, this is the Trek Powerfly. It comes in a few different series. This one is the FS9. The FS9 means it's got full suspension, and then it is fully loaded with fenders, rear racks, lights, and a dropper post. Everything you'd want in both a commuter bike as well as an, an off-road bike. The fenders are a plastic type material, but they do not feel cheap. It feels like they use an actual premium quality plastic if there is such a thing. But in benefit that if you did take this off-road, you're not going to get a lot of rattling noise. It's not going to be noisy and bouncing around and risking kind of hitting bumps and just damaging itself. The plastic is going to be a lot more durable to small minor imperfections that could be caused while trail riding. Instead, it's just going to be a lot better quality for that type of terrain. Overall, it's a superbly nice bike to ride. You were in a relatively upright, comfortable position. I had no issue. I thought it was really comfy, even in comparison to like any mountain bike, Trek Marlin, for example. The assists on it come in four different levels. Up this quite steep hill, although it doesn't look too bad, this is a standard graded bike path, as you can see. I'm in a mix of touring and turbo mode. And you do not have to pedal very hard with the combination of the really big 12-speed drivetrain. You can gear down and have it in a high assist mode, and it really just goes up anything you'd want to go up. It doesn't feel like much effort, and it gets really good range. In the turbo mode, even on the bike paths with a full charge, it's saying close to 56 K, which is a good distance. With steep hills, it does reduce it down to about... 44-ish kilometers, which is still pretty impressive, and it live updates no matter what. Through these back lanes over curves and all this rough terrain, this is really comfy. I have no issues with it. That rear suspension really is designed more for comfort than high performance control or braking power. It is very up and down and really takes those sharp edge hits. Kind of like a fancy a VPP suspension if you're into high-end mountain bikes. This really takes the bite off those really harsh cuts to it. It is focusing a lot on comfort and overall feel of the bike as opposed to some suspensions are all about keeping that braking power efficient while you're hammering corners. The idea with this Powerfly is you're actually riding just around, you're adventuring, you're exploring. As we switch it up, we try more and more off-road. This is actually a relatively steep off-road trail. Again, it doesn't look it too much because of the GoPro effect, but we're doing about 20-ish kilometers an hour, 20, 25. We level off across the flat in turbo mode, and it works really well. Coming through into handling down some tight single track, it does control really well. I was able to keep a pretty standard pace to it. You don't notice the weight of the bike too much. Definitely compared to a full-out trail bike, you can feel the head tube angle isn't as raked out in a tight situation like that. I just had a little drop. It is just because I'm used to another bike. If you were riding this bike, I think you'd be fine with it. I don't think you'd honestly have any troubles. This is one of the steeper portions of it where I really decided to push it, see how off-road it could get. It could climb quite well. It had a lot of control. I think if this tree wasn't down, I probably would have made it but it doesn't have the most grippy of tires, so you don't get crazy good traction throughout the entire trail system if you're going over wet logs like that. 
This I tried out the walk mode, which you press the top button and then hold the plus button, and it does help assist pull up. I'm not sure if I wasn't holding it hard enough or it was disconnecting. It just didn't have as much sensitivity. But it did have a bit of trouble pulling me up, although once again, the video doesn't show it. It was quite a steep incline there. It still made it up and it definitely helped way more than not having that walk mode. It was so much easier. Overall, I really enjoy riding this bike. It is really easy to handle. It's, again, a comfy position. No, you're not going to win any downhill races, but you feel confident on the downhills, and that's what's important here. I'm not afraid to go as fast as I can down this hill, just letting it roll and hitting a little jump at the end here. It feels like it can handle it. It feels like it's ready for it. The tire choice is grippy enough for most off-road terrain, but in that slick wet stuff you might want something a little more off-roady but with a bike like this you're going to be covering a lot of ground so you're going to ride out through the gravel you're going to ride out onto paved road and this is going to get the best longevity while still having a good traction to it compared to the other power flies the electric system is actually the same and the battery pack is the same so you're going to get the same ride distance and performance out of it as every other Trek Powerfly. The riding position is very, very similar. So you're going to be in this nice upright riding, easy control. You're really just losing features like that dropper post, which really makes the more technical downhill stuff a lot easier. The rear suspension, which is, again, more for comfort than anything else. It does add a bit of performance, but... It's not really the style of the suspension. The angle of attack is really focused on those sharp hits and really making for a comfortable ride. I can't really say that enough. It is a comfort design and it works very well. As you can see, this again is a relatively big hill. Obviously, it's about a 10, 12% grade. GoPro takes away a lot of that effect. But I'm able to climb up this at around 28 kilometers an hour with, you know, a good effort. I'm definitely not out of breath at this point, but I'm able to climb everything and anything. And I still have plenty of gears left. So I could make it even easier on myself by dropping myself all the way to that 12th gear, which is a very low 51 tooth. And you'll be able to climb absolutely anything. I really think with the mix of electric and that low gear range that is capable on this 12 speed, you're going to get away with it. With the Powerfly 4, obviously you're limited to a 10 speed. It is very low, so you should make up pretty much everything. But at that lower gear range, you're going to use a little more electric power because it's going to be running at a higher torque because you're outputting a stronger torque value. Gets a little complicated, but overall with a wider gear range, you'll actually get better efficiency out of your battery overall. Riding this bike is very comfortable it has the comfort grips to it the dropper post is there the brakes feel fantastic and that's with all the models these ones have the xt levers so they are really easy and comfortable to feel but rollability wise they'll all roll very similar the powerfly 4s and fs 4s do come with a little more aggressive of a tire so in a situation like this where i just coasted down the hill to feel any resistance from the motor or wheels I'm cruising at around 45k an hour, and really, that's about as fast as I go on any other bike, except for road bikes where if you pedal downhill, you can get close to 65, 70k an hour. They just roll really nice. I don't feel any resistance from any motor or anything like that. When I'm pedaling, it works well. When I roll, it works well. The Powerfly series is definitely one of the most capable and overall well-rounded mountain bikes out there. If you're kind of new into mountain biking or just wanting to explore, if you're in a Trek Marlin or you just want to get out there more and more, the Powerfly series will not let you down. What you pay for is comfort and features which will make it more pleasurable and will extend your range. But overall, each one does the same thing. They'll all go to the same place and they'll all get a very similar range because they are the same battery M motor from Bosch, which is the Powerline series, and it is a CX motor. 
they ride nice, it works well, and even after doing some steep climbs, some trails, you very quickly get an updated um, range update on the controller, so you know how far you're going to last at that exact mode. In this case, I'm pedaling at a relatively easy pace. My cadence is probably around the 80, and I'm going about 31 and a half kilometers an hour. My goal here was to pedal essentially as little as possible or as little effort but be rolling as much on electric so the electric is doing 90 percent of the work here i'm in the turbo mode and it's a very comfy pleasurable ride can't recommend it enough if you haven't test rode one get down and try one out this could be the bike which really expands how far you go on average i'm talking to people who expand their bike rides from you know 5k loops or less all the way to 25 up to that 50 where they're really pushing that battery to see how far they can get it and run it down they're running out of time or entertainment value before that battery value is getting down there if you've watched this entire video thank you very much hopefully you enjoyed it and it helped you out a little bit with how these feel where they can go what you can do with them Keep an eye on my channel as there is going to be new videos coming up. July 12th, Trek is launching an all-new electric bike, which you, if you were already subscribed, may have seen a sneak peek of that, which I was told to remove. That will be relaunching, and overall, good luck. Thanks for watching, guys.